the first thing I'm going to show you is how it can be used to speed up the vertical alignment process. Um, we're using Softgear Optimal inside of a um, road design package called RoadInch, which I hope uh, many of you are familiar with. But the Softgear Optimal technology is independent of the RoadInch software, and um, in the future it may be available in other packages. So let's let's um, let's start off by looking at a road design that I've created. I'm just going to open up the uh, there it is. This design was created from that terrain, and it consists of nothing but a horizontal alignment. So let's take a look at the plan window here. There it is. And as you could see from that um, surface, it's fairly, let's just bring that to the front for a second. The surface is fairly rugged, but the road is kind of finding its way through the, uh, the steep sections. This is an existing logging road and uh, we have access to this data, so it's nice and convenient. Um, and I'm going to assume that what we want to do here is improve the quality of this logging road by making it wider um, and raising the standard, the design speed, etc. So I did that in our road design package. I created an alignment, and you can see the old logging road alignment. It's, it's in uh, kind of yellow there in the background. And I, I used our software here to try and track that as best I could while maintaining a design speed that was reasonable. So for example, if you look at this area here, um, the design speed has been reduced to 50 kilometers per hour, um, which is a, a lot faster than the old logging road. Um, and that still produces a curve that there's no way we can track the logging road. But then further along, I was able to put in curves with uh, 60 kilometers per hour, like this one here, and I was able to track fairly close to the old logging road. And then in this area, here's the cross section. You can see the old logging road profile there. In this section, I moved over a little bit because I didn't want to go up this, cause a lot of rock cut in the hill here. Um, these are all tools that come with the road design package haven't shown you anything about the optimal yet. OK, so we've got a horizontal alignment. We want to build a vertical alignment. The process manually is to start by designing vertical intersection points uh, in the profile window. I'll just show you a couple. Let's see, I'll put a point up in there. And that's pretty steep. How steep is that? That is actually 7%. Uh, OK, that seems reasonable. I'll put a point down here. Uh, that's oh, minus 10.2. Let's move that over a little bit. Oh, now my grade is only minus 7. Ah, I better put a curve on there. Um, and there's a vertical curve. Wait for it to re-update. There we go. So, uh, and it's calculating the mass hall and so on. Now this process to build the entire vertical alignment would take a while, especially if I were going to do a good job of it and make sure that I had a balanced road and so on and so forth. So let's just undo that, delete the vertical alignment. And now I'm going to design a vertical alignment with the press of a button using Softry Optimal. Softry Optimal allows you to calculate costs of, a, of an alignment um, based on cut, fill, and haul. So let's take a look at the options here. Each material that you might cut has a cut um, cost associated with it, dollars per cubic meter, and an embankment cost. So you know it costs money to usually compact your material. So there we go with the uh, embankment cost. In addition, when you move material around, that costs money too. So we've got a haul cost. And the haul cost is not just per cubic meter. It's per cubic meter times kilometers. So the further you haul it, the more it costs. And we've got three levels of haul here, um, free haul, overhaul, and haul. Um, let's go on and calculate an alignment. So uh, first of all, I can figure out the cost of building a road along the ground. That's kind of un uninteresting. Let's just calculate an alignment. So I'm going to um, call this uh, from scratch. And this alignment will, 
okay, I'm going to calculate cross-sections. Good. Every 20 meters, that sounds reasonable. Um, I've got some pretty big bumps in the ground, and so I'm going to allow the optimizer to go 10 meters above and 10 meters below the existing alignment. The existing alignment is the original ground. I want to make this about a 60 kilometer road, so I'm 60 kilometers per hour, so I'm going to put in a, a K factor of 20K, or 20 uh, meters per percent. Got minimum, maximum grades. They're pretty big, but this used to be a logging road, so it is that steep. Um, to reduce these grades would cost an awful lot of cut and fill, so let's leave it at 10. We've already set up the material costs, and I think I'm ready to go. Let me just set a couple things in here. This is more technical stuff. Um, I'm working with a, a debug version of the, not a debug version, a uh, testing version of the software, beta version. Uh, some of those options won't be available in the future. Um, basically, we're telling the software here uh, that we want to have curves of 50 meters and there we go. That looks right. This is probably the only um, option that will be in the final release version. How long do you want your curves to be and your tangents between curves? Let's just see how it works now. So what it's doing now is calculating cross-sections, pro pro uh, providing data for the optimizer. This road is a little under two kilometers long. As you can see, it's got lots of uh, topography to it. Now it's calculating a optimal solution. And now it's recalculating the cost based on the alignment that was found. Finished. Now that did take a few seconds. Actually, it says here on the bottom how long that took. Uh, 18 seconds to find the, the solution. Um, no no um, point comparing this with the original ground solution, because that really is not a solution at all. Um, but it has calculated a cost, $500,000 to build this, and that's based on those, those costs we put in there. Um, it's important to note that the cost calculation is only for the earthwork. We're not costing pavement or um, culverts or other similar items. And from the point of view of, of finding the best alignment, those costs don't change much when you change the alignment. So they don't really change the, uh, the best alignment. They just add to your cost at the end. So that green line there is the um, alignment that was calculated by the optimizer. Let's set that as my current alignment. And you can see the curves that were calculated. There it is. Just zoom in a little bit on that hill. So there's that 20K curve. Um, let's take a look at some of the cross sections too and see what we've got here. So um, down near the beginning, we're, we're climbing quite steeply. So this, this section here is in that climb. Uh, hard to see what's going on with this tiny screen I'm working with, but it, it goes faster over the internet. So there we are. There's the there's the uh, the steep section at the beginning, and that's what the cross section looks like there. As we move through the alignment, you can see um, we're basically staying near the ground. There's some a little bit of cut. Um, that was easy. I created a vertical alignment with the push of a button, and it seems reasonable.